it is not being given enough attention. And it is sad because that's the only way whether you can gauge if your restoration activity is uh, achieving its original objectives or not, and if not, why. So uh, the uh, activities of monitoring are and need to be an integral part of any national or global restoration plan. So far, there, are, there have been conversations on how we could you know, measure whether these global commitments uh, will be achieved, uh, but it stays there pretty much. And that's uh, a very top-down approach, which has its values. In other words, you can quantify uh, forest cover gains from space, but you also need to quantify and uh, gauge whether the restoration activity is succeeding at the ground level, because restoration starts on the ground. So we need both a bottom-up and a top-down approach to really uh, satisfy, if you will, both dimensions and generate reliable data that tells at the end, by 2020 or 2045, whether these uh, ambitious commitments were, were achieved or not. To meet its targets, uh, you need to consider a lot of different variables, not only state of degradation, and not only whether a given vegetation type of ecosystem type is more threatened than others, you need to consider also tenure rights, socioeconomic uh, data, and above all, you really need to have clarity on what your restoration objectives are. Not necessarily meaning increasing forest cover, but probably enhancing the supply of a given ecosystem service, like watershed protection, for example, or carbon fixation, or biodiversity objectives. And when you don't have that clarity in these so-called uh, national restoration plans or uh, restoration maps, uh, you tend to focus only on the you know, vegetation part. We think that not enough attention is being given in national restoration plans uh, in the context of how to allow nature takes its course. Uh, most of the discourse is based on tree planting, which of course has you know, a very valid reason. It has a productive uh, objective as well as protective, but there are many other cost-effective approaches, and one of them is allowing forest succession to proceed in areas where the substrate and other ecological conditions are good enough that the process can really evolve towards a mature ecosystem in 20, 30, 40 years. So on the one hand, it can be very cost effective because you don't need to invest in tree planting or nurseries. But on the other hand, you need to be really careful and decide you know, how exactly and where the chances of success are the best. So to me, the best strategy is to combine both so-called active approaches to restoration and passive approaches to restoration, which is in essence allowing forest succession to proceed without any human intervention or else with very little human intervention.